MVT has a full range of carbine stocks that fit our chassis as well as any other system that uses a carbine interface. Here we have the Skeleton Carbine Stock, or the SCS, the Skeleton Carbine Stock Lite, or the SCS Lite, and the Composite Carbine Stock, or CCS. All of these stocks have a buffer tube system, as well as a cheek riser adjustment, a length of pull adjustment, and attachment points for bag riders, Picatinny rails, and other accessories. So we're gonna go through the features of all of these individually later, but first, we're gonna show you the installation process, which is exactly the same on all three of these. And for the purposes of this, we're gonna go through and install the composite carbine stock. One thing you wanna keep in mind is there's a small uh, interruption in the threads, there's a notch in here. And what that's for is for aligning your buttstock and locking it down with a set screw once we're finished the installation. So to get access to that set screw, we've actually removed the grip from this chassis um, to make everything more accessible. Our first step right now is to thread the carbine stock into the back of the chassis, like so. So what you'll find is your stock will bottom out on the threads and you wanna rotate it back so that your butt pad is sitting vertical and in line with the chassis. Next thing you wanna do is just hand tight down the castle nut so that it keeps everything in place. Now what we wanna do is flip the whole thing over and we wanna lock down this set screw which is in line now with the interruption in the threads uh, in the bottom. With that locked in place, the next thing you want to do is take your castle nut wrench and lock up the castle nut so that everything is locked into place. With that all ready to go, you reinstall your grip and you're ready to shoot. The body of the composite carbine stock is a glass reinforced polymer that gives you low weight and high strength. So one of the first features of the composite carbine stock is a notch in the cheek riser to allow me to remove my bolt. So I'm going to do that right now just to ensure that our system is safe. You then have your length of pull adjustability through a spacer system. You also have an adjustable cheek riser up and down, as well as an M-lock slot on the bottom to attach optional accessories. So for your cheek riser adjustment, you're going to want to take your 1 8 inch Allen key and loosen off the two set screws on the back here, which allows you to adjust your cheek riser up and down to correctly position your head behind your scope. Once you find the correct position, you tighten up the two Allen screws and you're ready to go. So the length of pull can be adjusted in quarter inch increments by installing and removing spacers from the back of the buttstock. To install or remove a spacer, you're gonna loosen off the two screws into the butt pad with a 532nd Allen key. You don't wanna back the screw all the way out. Our system is being designed so that you don't actually have to remove the butt pad to snap the spacers in and out. You're gonna to wanna to back the screws off long enough to make sure that you clear the protrusions on the back of the spacer. Once you're ready to install it, you slide the spacer in lock it in place, and you should feel it snap into the other spacers. Then you take your Allen key and thread everything back in so that everything locks up tight. Now that we have everything snugged up, I have a quarter inch more length of pull. One of the first features you'll notice is a notch in the cheek riser that allows you to safely remove your bolt to ensure that our system is safe. You have a machined aluminum lightweight body. There's a length of pull adjustment here with spacers. You have cheek riser adjustment through a toolless ambidextrous system and an M-lock slot on the bottom for optional accessory attachment. So your cheek riser adjustment is done toolessly through the use of these two thumb screws on, on the side and they can be placed either side of the buttstock to allow you to move your cheek riser up and down and then lock it back into place just by snugging them up. To increase or decrease the length of pull, the first thing you're going to want to do is take your 532nd Allen key and loosen off the two screws in the rear of the buttstock. The included screws are sufficient length that allow you to unthread them far enough to create a gap and snap the spacer in place. To add or remove the spacer, you're going to want to slide it between the gap Align it with the two cuts 
and you should feel it snap into place. Once you're happy with the length of pull, snug down the two screws to ensure they're not going to move, and you're adjusted. It is also possible to adjust the cant on your butt pad just a little bit by loosening off these two screws on the side here with a 532nd Allen key. After loosening them off, you can cant the butt pad left and right to fit your body style a little bit better and then tighten everything up once you're happy. This is our Skeleton Carbine Stock, or SCS. To make this system safe, we're going to remove the bolt right now. Some of the features that the SCS has, a butt pad in and out adjustment for your length of pull, and toolless butt pad height, adjustable cheek riser up and down, as well as cant, and this also features a machine 6061 aluminum skeleton body. So your first set of adjustments would be your cheek riser position. You're able to slide the whole cheek riser carriage back and forth along your buffer tube, getting positioned exactly where you'd want it. You're also able to cant it around the tube to make sure that the cheek riser fits in your position where you'd like. Left-handed shooters are able to remove the assembly completely from the buffer tube, flip it around and reinstall it to fit them better. The cheek riser adjustment is done by the use of this thumb wheel on the side, where you can raise and lower the cheek riser to correctly position it for yourself. Once you're happy with the position, you're able to lock it in place by the use of two set screws on either side and a 1 8 Allen key. Your length of pull adjustments are done by the system of thumb wheels, turning it in and out to correctly position for your length of pull. Once you're happy with that, you can lock that down with your 5 seconds Allen key with the two screws on the side. And then from there, you're able to adjust the butt pad height with a tool adjustment on the knob up and down. So to adjust the butt pad cant, you're going to remove the butt pad assembly itself by loosening off this thumb screw, raising that out of there, and then adjusting with a 1 8 Allen key uh, on the rear. So you just loosen these two off. Cant the whole assembly to where you want it, and then retorque it back down. Once that's torqued back down, you can slide your butt pad assembly back in, reposition it where you want, and put your thumb wheel back in place. Now you have a butt pad cant. So if you require extra butt pad cant, what you'd want to do is take your 532nd Allen key and loosen off the, the screws holding the buttstock body to the buffer tube, canting the full assembly over left and right to give yourself an extra couple degrees of buttstock cant. So once you've finished tightening it back down, you have a buttstock that's fully adjusted to your body and shooting type. No matter what carbine stock you end up choosing, it's gonna fit your shooting system, your platform, it's gonna help you shoot better.